these 15 books that I sold on Amazon were picked because there's a lesson to be learned from them. What's going on everybody? It is Manny and I am back with another video. I'm really excited to put this video together for you. I've been meaning to put a video like this together for a very long time. I want to show you some of the books that I have sold on Amazon, not just in July, but in months prior to that. What I wanted to do is break down some of these sales according to specific segments of my inventory so that I could show you what I have learned over time as far as what sells on Amazon. And hopefully by showing you some very specific books, I'm also able to talk about books that supposedly don't sell on Amazon, but they really do if you know what you're looking for. And I mean, we're going to talk about the obvious. We're going to talk about textbooks. We're talking about trending people and topics. But I'm also going to talk about things that perhaps don't sell as well on average, such as cookbooks, fiction, kids books, and audiobooks on CD. But rather than talk about it, let's launch right into this and let's show you some really clear examples of some very good sales that I have made on Amazon in the previous month and months before that. Let's go. All right, folks. Well, here we are. And I'm going to lead off with three books that I sold that are in the cookbooks category. And any of us that have been trying to source cookbooks for a while know that cookbooks can be extremely hit or miss. And what I wanted to do was show you a couple of types of cookbooks that tend to do well. Uh, the first two are going to highlight what I personally think uh, can be the best type of cookbooks to list. And those are the types of cookbooks that teach about a diet trend or uh, some sort of a lifestyle based uh, cookbook. Uh, we have paleo diet, but we also have things along the lines of vegetarian, uh, vegan, uh, keto is a big one now as well. Now, they're not all going to be winners, and one of the warnings that I will tell you is to really pay attention to the trends on those kinds of books because they tend to be extremely uh, uh, fad heavy. Uh, they come into style and they go out of style just as quickly, so be aware of that. Uh, the last cookbook is uh, a cookbook by uh, Ina Gartan, and I do look for cookbooks that are uh, focused around a celebrity chef, but specifically celebrity chefs that uh, tend to speak to a more of an artisan, uh, foodie crowd. Uh, your Rachel Rays of the world are not going to pay the bills, but... Uh, uh, the types of chefs like Ina Garten that cook in a more rustic way, uh, those tend to do much, much better. Alrighty then, moving right along, I want to get to this book here uh, because not only uh, is it going to really cover the topic of people that are trending and people that are all over social media, but we're also going to address how I price extremely fast sellers. There's a big difference between a fast seller and a book that is basically an instant seller. Now you're going to notice that this book is written by Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary V is extremely well known in our circles as sellers and uh, the entrepreneurial uh, market. Uh, he is all over social media, is extremely well promoted, uh, this book is a fine example. Uh, the book has an average sales rank of 6,000. So needless to say, I'd listed the book on July the 2nd, and it sold as soon as it touched Amazon's dock on July the 3rd. Uh, but here's how I handled the pricing. At the time, the used buy box on this type of an instant seller was right around $15.00. And there were four or five sellers that were right around that price range. Amazon's price has fluctuated anywhere from 16 to about $22 on this book. Uh, and it fluctuates really from day to day. Uh, but at the same time, the, uh, the new offers were right around uh, $18 to $17, depending on the day as well, uh, just because of how many copies this book is selling. Uh, I did not try to go anywhere near the used buy box. You're going to notice that I sold this book for almost $20. Uh, I priced 
this thing right into the second page, uh, figuring that with the amount of offers that were ahead of me that were going to sell, uh, and also the combination of that and my repricer just taking it back over, it was either going to sell right away at that price, or my repricer was going to bring it to a little more of a realistic uh, price. Either way, it sold instantly. It sold for almost $20. When I listed this book, I was on the second page of FBA offers. Uh, so what I will tell you is that if you're treating your fastest sellers the exact same way as your mid-range to long sellers as far as your pricing strategy goes, you are losing a ton of money. Okay, so here we go. We're moving on to the next book, and I want to talk about car repair manuals. Uh, this Haynes repair manual, it took about a month to sell. Uh, nothing particularly special. It's just a really reliable sale and makes me anywhere from 4 to $10 every time. On rare occasion, I'll come across some older uh, Jeep uh, repair manuals that seem to do a little better, and I can usually uh, get a... Uh, a nice sale out of those uh, but a couple of things about these uh, the first thing that I would say is when you're sourcing a Haynes repair manual uh, the first thing to look out for is that the older the better uh, typically I do better with the older ones as opposed to some of the more recent ones uh, that might be uh, a little less rare easier to find uh, but some of the things to really watch out for when you source these, first things first, when you scan it, make sure that what comes up is the correct manual. I've seen a few times with these where you will scan it and the wrong one will come up. Uh, that can be a really big problem if somebody's looking for a particular model car and the manual that you uh, ship in is not the same one that they need. It tends to lead to problems, but I have noticed that with these in particular, that that can be the case. Uh, the second thing to really be careful about with these has to do with the condition of them. Take a couple extra seconds to make sure that you can sell these on Amazon because these do tend to get dirty. I mean, think about the environment that they get used in, uh, oily, dirty, uh, a mechanic needs a part right away and they don't write it down, what do they do? They rip the page out. So just take a second look at these before you source them to make sure that they're gonna be in sellable condition. Uh, and the last thing to watch out for these is to make sure that they're in the book category. Uh, they can very easily be in the automotive category or they can just be uh, completely misplaced in the catalog altogether. So make absolutely sure that when you source these, you make sure that they're in the book category. Okay, and on to the next book. And as you can see, I want to talk about kids' books. Uh, this was a $20 sale. It took a little over two weeks to sell. Uh, the book itself has an average rank of about 725, 730,000. And that's over the course of the last year. Uh, kids books themselves are kind of like other categories where as sellers we don't spend very much time in there and we should not spend much time in there but if you do take a little time in the beginning to learn what it is that you're looking for uh, you could definitely pull some really good money out of that section because let's face it most other sellers are not uh, this particular book is uh, by Andy Rash and it's kind of in the same tradition of the Are You My Mommy books. But uh, some of the things that I like to look for in the kids category that might be an indicator of a potential uh, sellable item is I really do love looking at the hardcover kids books, especially the ones that have dust jackets. Uh, another thing to look for is the, uh, the content of the book. If you find a kid's book and it's teaching about another culture or teaching about where uh, someone uh, comes from, if you're looking at a, uh, a kid's book and it's teaching what could be a really touchy subject and making it simple and understandable for children, uh, particularly if you pick it up and it's got a nice dust jacket, it's got a nice feel to it, feels like it might have uh, 
had some money go into the production of it, you know, you probably want to just take a quick look and scan that. And one more uh, thing that I love to look at, uh, speaking of box sets, uh, any, anything that is made by Usborn, uh, Usborn, they, they make some really good box sets, and a lot of them seem to really be worth some money. So always be on the lookout for that because it's an opportunity that a lot of other sellers are just passing up. All right, moving on to the next book. I wanted to highlight this book because I want to talk about books that other sellers just miss. Uh, this book was in a situation where it had clearly been passed over by seller after seller after seller. Uh, when I finally got to this book, it was late afternoon in a highly competitive uh, situation. And there is no way that this book should have still been there for me to pick up. Uh, this book in particular was missed because it wasn't scannable, but more importantly, it wasn't scannable because it had an Amazon FNSQ label over the, uh, the barcode. Now, you can look at this two different ways. You can look at it in a negative light and automatically assume, well, this is somebody's duds that were removed from the warehouse. It's worthless. Or you can look at it the other way. Uh, somebody thought at some point that this book was valuable enough to send into the warehouse in the first place. So it's really a matter of uh, how you want to look at it. The best thing to do, look at the actual book in front of you. You know, is it fairly recent? Is it in good shape? What's the subject matter? And uh, honestly, this book has an average rank just over 1 million, and it's still sold as soon as it hit the warehouse, it, within three days, it was still on back order when it sold. And it sold for $40. It was a $40 sale that I got super cheap. And quite honestly, uh, there is no reason why it should have been in that bin. And it was just there because it couldn't be scanned. And a lot of sellers just look at uh, those Amazon labels and just automatically pass. All right, now the next book that I want to talk about that I sold uh, is technically an audiobook on CD. This is the, uh, the Harry Potter Book 5. It sold for just under $20. It took almost two months to sell, uh, but I want to use this to kind of remind you, don't shy away from audiobooks. Uh, audiobooks can, you can generate some pretty big money, especially if you can get them cheap. Uh, the, the one major pain in the butt with audiobooks is that usually before you leave the place, you're going to want to make sure that you have all of the CDs. And secondly, that if you don't have a way of conditioning the CDs or resurfacing them, you want to make sure that the discs are not in really bad shape. Uh, some minor scratches uh, won't be a big deal. Uh, but if you see any scratching that is on the, uh, the front face or the art face of the CD, uh, that's usually something you want to put back because that'll be uh, something that is scratched all the way through. Uh, but do not overlook audiobooks, especially if you can get them really cheap, uh, fill up on them on fill-a-bag sales and things like that. Really, really good money there. All right, and coming up next, let's talk about fiction. I sold these three books uh, fairly recently, and I wanted to bring them up because fiction, kind of like kids' books, is the sort of a category where you're not going to do a whole lot of scanning, but you probably want to stop in that section and you want to look through uh, for certain things. Now, now, obviously, you know, just like other categories. In the beginning, when you want to really learn the category, you may do more scanning than normal, but uh, this is not an area where I suggest you hunker down and scan every single title. Uh, these specific books should illustrate some of the things that I look for. Uh, starting with the first one, obviously there's going to be some very popular authors. Uh, and probably the most uh, prolific and the most popular, uh, especially in the horror genre of fiction, is going to be Stephen King. Uh, it kind of goes without saying because he constantly has uh, projects in development and he's just a very popular author. Uh, 
I wanted to bring his up in particular because one of the things that you really want to look for are fiction books that are either becoming uh, movies or adapted to television shows. And he's had a bunch of them. Uh, we, we have It and It 2 uh, is going to be coming out soon. But you should really keep an eye out for Stephen King books because he's got more projects in the works. You know, I would expect his popularity to continue, especially uh, there's been so many announcements about projects coming out uh, based on his material. Uh, you know, they're remaking Firestarter the movie again. The Dark Tower is going to be a TV show. I know that Doctor Sleep, which is the sequel uh, to The Shining, that's going to be coming out. Uh, the Bone Church Creep Show, I found out, is actually going to be a uh, a television series that AMC is putting together. And uh, you know, so I, I would expect his books to continue to go up in popularity. And obviously, when they become uh, movies and TV shows and they trend, you know, these are books that go up in value typically uh, I wanted to also talk about the second book because this book I think quite frankly unless it looked as pristine and new as it did I may have missed it as well uh, this book was tiny it was the size of a mass market paperback but it was quite thick and I will tell you that uh, as far as popular authors go uh, some authors just seem to that just seem to create books that sell for quite a bit of money. Uh, this particular uh, duo, they are a couple, and they actually have a couple of different titles that are worth some pretty good money. Uh, the last one is a Brad Thor book, uh, The Lions of Lucerne. I wanted to talk about this one for two reasons. First and foremost, it's a former. It was a former library book uh, that sold for quite a bit of money. Uh, but secondly, it's also a book that is being talked about and developed into a film. So just make sure that when you're going through the fiction section, uh, try to keep up with the times as far as which books are being developed into other projects and uh, start to develop that little internal memory bank of authors who tend to uh, create some books of value. Now, no uh, sale video would be complete unless we talked about uh, the magic that is textbooks. Uh, this was the first textbook that I sold during this textbook season. And it sold super fast, so I just went ahead and took the sale. I didn't price it up to, uh, you know, to, to wait it out and maybe get a little more money later in the season. Uh, I just flipped it, you know. It... Uh, it got sent in on July the 2nd, and even after uh, being received and uh, going on back order, it still sold on July the 12th. And obviously it sold for just under $60, uh, not bad for a $0.62 cent investment. Uh, for a little while there, this one also looked like a pretty reasonable uh, online arbitrage opportunity, so, uh, so have at it, folks. Uh, gotta love textbooks. Alrighty, folks, we are at the last group of books that I want to talk about today. And yes, I can't stress enough how important it is to look up books, even if they don't have a barcode. Uh, during more competitive sales and other competitive environments, it's not something that I would recommend you do as you go. If anything, uh, I like to set them aside or I like to change how they are on a shelf so that I can easily spot them and go back afterward. I like to scan everything that is scannable first and then go back and do all of my manual lookups at once, either using OCR with Scoutly or uh, using the image recognition out of Seller Central. Uh, these three books, they all sold for a great profit. Uh, the one I want to talk about the most, though, is the one on the right. Uh, the uh, the Bonsai Masterclass book, it sold, uh, it, it took about a month to sell, but uh, it was the best sale of the three, 
And I want to talk about what it is that I look for in particular because I do not look up every single book that doesn't have a barcode. Uh, I'm, spe I'm looking for very specific subject matters. Uh, the more uh, the more detailed and the more niche and the more specific the content, the better. Uh, where I may not want to grab a uh, an introductory class on a subject, uh, but I would definitely uh, look for a book that may be specific to uh, a teacher of that subject. Uh, any book that has a really nice uh, niche subject matter. Look for niche hobbies. Uh, in particular, look for hobbies that are not uh, inexpensive. If it's an expensive hobby to, uh, to get into, people will tend to spend money on good books about it. Uh, so absolutely, positively, don't forget to go back and focus on manual lookups. Well, that's all for today's video, folks. If you enjoyed this video and you want me to make more videos like this one, please remember to share, like, and subscribe to support the channel. If you haven't done so already, make sure you like this video. And if you're not subscribed, tap on that book bag on the right. And while you're in there, tap on that bell so you get all notifications of new videos when they drop. Until next time, let's go make some money.